Hello, welcome back for another Stardust tutorial. This time I thought I would take a quick look at setting up grid-based animations inside of uh, Stardust and some cool things that you can do with it. Um, some older features and some newer updates that they've included to uh, make this workflow a little bit easier. Um, I have some examples I'm going to kind of skim through to show you some of the possibilities and then just kind of break down my overall approach to creating grid-based uh, particle animations that help make it a streamlined process for you. All right, let's take a look at some examples. All right, so this is a very first straightforward example and it's creating a grid and creating a maze-like structure. So what's happening here is that I have a square comp who's created a, a grid of particles using a grid emitter and we're using a particle source which is just a black and white line. And we're creating random rotations within the particles to create this uh, randomized structure. So what's cool about this is that you could change that particle type to any shape and uh, you could create some really interesting procedural patterns. So let's make a new comp and look at how to set this up. So first things first, again, I'm gonna make uh, this really streamlined and easy. I don't like math and <laughs> math is hard so let's just keep things easy and go for a thousand by a thousand it's an easy number to divide by it's an easy number to you know make divisions um, duration doesn't matter frame rate doesn't matter for what we're doing we're going to call this grid easy so now we have a blank comp and let's we're going to make a new solid i'm going to call that SD for Stardust and I'll go ahead and apply Stardust to this layer. So now if we play the camera forward or the timeline forward we have our basic uh, Stardust emitter. So the first thing we want to do is change this from point to grid and you'll see that now we just have more particles. Uh, what we're going to do is change their uh, speed to zero so that they're born and they just exist. And now this is where setting up that thousand by thousand comp comes into you know play here so we know what our comp size is so we're just going to plug that into our x and y and our particles now fit our comp exactly easy and our size z we're going to go ahead and leave alone because we're actually going to get rid of z and just keep this as a flat grid so down under grid properties we're going to set the grid z to one so there's none there and now right now our grid is set to 10 by 10 so with our, again through our easy math if we set our uh, particle size to 10 and let's 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 change this to rectangles real quick sorry uh, if we set our particle size to 100 that would be uh, 10 in the X and 10 in the Y which gets us a thousand so easy math. Again, I'm trying to keep this easy, right? So uh, great, we have a grid. We can't really tell what's going on because they're all white. So let's make a particle source and uh, start to see what is happening under the hood here. So I'm gonna make a new comp and I'm gonna call this uh, particle grid 100. And we're gonna make this comp 100 by 100 because that is what our particle size is set to. So we're gonna do that and our duration again doesn't matter we're just going to keep it 100 because that's what our top comp is and i'm going to make a new solid and i'm going to go ahead and actually let's just make a new text layer and i'm going to make like an a because it's just something easy to see and i have this uh, pixelated font in there so we're just going to set the a in there we're going to go back to our sorry we're going to go back to our uh, grid easy comp here and drag in that particle source and then now let's go to our particle and we're going to actually change it from rectangle to texture and our texture is going to be a layer and it's particle grid 100. So now we can see that uh, our particle is being put evenly across our grid and they're all touching uh, pretty much perfectly across our grid space. So 
this is great and this is a foundation for creating some cool interesting animations so one of the new uh, quality of life features that they've added for us is this new random limit so before if i wanted to give this uh, have each of them be a random angle uh, random rotation i could just adjust this angle random and you'll see what happens immediately there's kind of like some chaos they're being treated as a sprite so they're like turning and you can see that they're flat you could fix this by uh, hitting limit to 2d and now we have them all rotating differently but uh, it's kind of chaotic so what we want to do is actually limit their angle by 90 degrees so nothing happens right away but we can actually just go in here and pick which axis and I'm gonna say Z and that fixes our problem so now we have them randomly rotated but they're all in a 90 degree turn so it's 90 180 270 360 which is all the way back up to zero so now we have something that's looking pretty interesting and you can see clearly the direction of the particles based on that a shape so now we went back in here and let's say okay well we're happy with that but let's say maybe we wanted an arrow as our example so we could uh, again now we have these exact dimensions so we can create some easy shapes really fast so um, let's say we knew we wanted um, an arrow at the square bottom and triangle on the top we could create a width of 100 but height of 50 and we could snap this to the top oops sorry holding Y and control I can drag that to the top and same thing drag this to the um, top of the comp up here uh, maybe 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 that's not right I don't know why my app is not working oh was I just holding the wrong so we actually know our comp is 100 by 100 so we can use this to our advantage and create let's say like a 50 by 100 solid and now we know that that is exactly the uh, half of our frame so what's great is also since we're using 2d layers we can use the align tool and we can uh, align this to the top of the composition so now if we go back up we have what our first example look like which is a bunch of barcodes and they're rotating and aligning and creating a cool pattern so if we go back into here we could create like I said an arrow so I'm going to duplicate this I'm going to put one at the bottom one at the top and let's say I actually want this one to be 50 by 50 and this uh, top one I'm going to create a new mask by pressing uh, control shift in and I'm going to just grab both of these points and scale them in and then we have an arrow so I'm gonna go back to my top comp and you can see now that already even with something so simple you're starting to get very interesting shapes so that's the the first cool tip is if you're, if you're gonna create a static grid uh, this is your go-to method of getting all of these things to be in a very interesting pattern and you could create a lot of cool shapes with this so the second step to this is well what if we wanted to create something that was animated and still keep that 90 degree rotation now to do this we're gonna use a cool trick with the filled technique so the filled technique is we're going to go to the field and what you can do here is have it affect your particles using a texture so we're going to go to maps uh, our type we're going to do layer and then we're going to create a new layer to affect these particles so what we're going to do is create uh, another comp well i'll make a new i'll make a, a new layer in here a uh, thousand by a thousand we'll call this our field map and hit enter and now i'm going to pre-comp that into a new layer move all the attributes into the new layer or into the new composition I'm sorry and open that up and to keep things simple 
I'm just going to go ahead and create a um, an effect on this layer, and we're going to add a gradient ramp. So this gradient ramp is going from top to bottom, black to white, and we're going to see how this affects our particles. So I'm going to turn it off so that it's just in our scene, and we're going to go to our field, and we're going to look at what it's affecting. Uh, how you want this to apply is since this is a grid in the X and Y, that's what we're going to put. We're going to put a uh, project in the X and Y, apply axis, X and Y. So uh, right now it's set to opacity. We're going to set this to rotation. And again, we don't see anything. Sorry, because it's the first frame of the animation. Uh, we could fix this by going to our emitter at the top and doing time offset frames one. And when you start at the beginning of your animation, uh, your particles are already there instead of being born on frame one. They're born on frame zero. Uh, so there is our animation and we don't really see anything different, right? Uh, the, the next thing I want to do is like, if you saw when I scrub forward, you saw that there's more particles appearing. We don't want that. So we're going to just set this to once and we're going to set our particle life to be 10, just something that is longer than our current animation, which is four seconds. So now we have this and how can we have that field affect these in an interesting way? So again, this field, if we go down here to the bottom is affecting the uh, rotation right now. Uh, but we actually only want it to affect one axis, not uh, the X and Y. We're just going to do Z. So again, we're not seeing any change there. And it's because we haven't actually assigned the layer. So we're going to assign our field map to there. And now you can see something interesting is happening. So it has affected our particles. And if we change the amount here, you can see if I drag this to zero, or actually, sorry, I went to negative. If I drag that to zero, it's no effect, and it's kind of our randomness. Actually, we could just animate this. And if I just went forward some frames, went to 100, turn this up, and you could see that it is affecting the particles at the top where it's black. It's not affecting them much. At the bottom, it's white. It's affecting them uh, the most. So what's happening is that at uh, the pure white value, when the map is affecting it, they're doing a full 360 uh, on their rotation that we've picked, which is Z. And at black, it is trying to leave them uh, at their original position or rotation, I should say. So if you went into the ramp and actually drug our, our black point down a little bit so that we didn't affect that whole top row, because you know we have uh, 100 pixels, um, you can see that if I play this now, that top row really isn't moving and it's static. So this is pretty cool. This is interesting, but we're losing that really cool 90 degree turn. So how do we affect that. So the, the interesting thing we can do here is use another mode on the field. Instead of uh, affecting the rotation, we're going to affect the texture. So in the same way that the, uh, the field is using the black to white values to affect the rotation, we're actually going to affect the time. It's almost like a, a time remap on the project or on the pre-comp, sorry. Uh, so let's jump into our particle and let's understand that. So again, with this perfect number is making things easy. We have this zero to 100. So what I'm going to do is I know that to divide this into four, which is, you know, we wanted to do 90, 180, 270 and 360, we could add keyframes at 25 frames, every 25 frames. So I'm going to uh, select both of these. I'm just going to pre-comp this to keep it simple. Call this arrow. And my pivot is at the center of the comp. And I can just go to the rotation value and set a keyframe. I'm actually going to set this to a hold keyframe. So at 25, we're going <coughs> to, excuse me, at 25, we're going to leave it at zero. And at 50, we're going to do 90. And at 75 we're going to do 180 and then at the very end we're going to do 270. So that gives us every direction up, right, down, left. So now if we go back up to our pre-comp we can see what's happening. So again our field map currently is uh, not affected at the beginning and then as time goes up it is affecting overall. And so the same thing, I didn't, uh, I don't know why. I think the, um, I 
I think, did I set this up right? <laughs> uh, the texture is projected in the X and Y and apply axis. I didn't think that the axis really mattered. Oh, um, actually, what's happening is uh, the texture is set to current time. So this is interesting. I figured out this the hard way, right? So what is happening is that we ne actually need to change the current time to random still frame. And I think that is, yep, so that's, that's what, that is what affects this. So <laughs> I don't know the real answer there, but uh, I think random still frame is essentially telling that our pre-comp is a static, uh, even though that it's animated uh, over time, zero to 100, we want that pre-comp to stay static the entire time. So it's born and it's just staying at one value. But even though it's staying, that technically would mean that it's picking a random frame from over that pre-comp. But what we're doing is manually overriding that. So we're saying, sure, and I'll show you what that. So I'm going to turn off the field, right? And what you'll see is by setting this to a uh, random still frame, what it was set to was current time. So current time means that as this plays out, uh, these arrows are going to rotate based on that pre-comp animation. But we don't want that. So if we set this to random still, basically what happens is they pick us a, uh, a random still from within that and are static the entire time. So this is what we want. We're going to turn back on our field. And uh, if I turn on this animation one more time, zero to 100, you can see that those arrows are then picking random frames. Not picking random frames, but are being affected by that gradient that we've established from the white to black value. And again, the ones that are in the, the black values are not being affected by, that's basically zero. And the ones in 100 are, you know, the white ones are being told that they need to go all the way to white. So to make this even more uh, visible, what we can do is leave this at 100, go into our, uh, our ramp here, and let's say we wanna make this a um, radial ramp. And I'm gonna put a, sphere in the center and the, and then uh, we can let it gradi out, gradiate outwards that's fine and go and look at how that affects it um, so you're basically kind of containing where these rotations are happening so the thing that is uh, kind of currently messing with us is that we have a random rotation turned on still so I'm going to go to the uh, particle rotation properties and turn this back to zero and um, we'll leave the uh, rotation limit on for now. And you'll see that these uh, particles within this area are being affected. And this is such a op art uh, animation already just by the contrasting values. So uh, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna lock this and I'm going to show you both of these comps up at the same time so we can see how this is affecting it. There we go. We have both of our, our comps open. And I'm actually going to uh, quantize this. So I'm gonna just do a uh, posterize to get a very specific um, radiating circle here. And so what's happening is that, uh, again, so the white value is telling it, hey, at the very end, you need it to be this. And the gray values are telling it every frame in between, basically where it's hitting those. So at 50% opacity it would be in the middle, 75% opacity would be on our, our rotation, and it's we're kind of just controlling that um, that 90 degrees that we want by this gradation. Uh, what's cool though is that you can start to animate this. So let's animate this just to show you what that looks like. So I'm gonna animate my uh, endpoint here, and I'm going to just set a keyframe. We'll do we'll just do it at 50. And then at the beginning, 
there's nothing and we'll copy that and paste it there and what you'll see I'm going to close this and go back to here see as that animates it goes you basically like creating a loop and you'll see in our top comp that as they get white they're going to those other values and then they're going back to their original position so this is a cool way to create some rotation control and still keeping it in that uh, designed sensibility of specific rotations and then if you just want to get crazy with it um, what's even better is to go ahead and just let's turn off this animation uh, I'm gonna keep this gradient wide and then I'm just gonna add a turbulent displace and we're gonna set the complexity really three lots of amplitude and uh, maybe like really big maybe not that much amplitude and let's animate the evolution and we'll actually tell it to cycle so we're gonna do zero to one and we'll play that it's basically a noise that is looping and we can go back into our top comp and we'll see that now we have this uh, seemingly random rotation happening but everything is sticking to a grid so it creates a pretty cool animation and then you can see that you could just take this and have a ton of different permutations by what that pre-comp is what the design of it is so I have a couple of other uh, pre-comps here so I'm just going to drag in some other sources. So here's the uh, original source that I had, which are just lines. And those aren't animating, so nothing is going to be affected. Uh, I think those are circles that aren't. Uh, so here is a particle source that has different phases of a circle. These are... Uh, angles that are rotating so if I open up the source we can see what this looks like so I just created a, a sequence of you know instead of doing it by 100 it's just gonna still going to look at the duration of the comp and set it to the maximum so I just did frames so I knew that I wanted very specific shapes so I wanted a, a full-on uh, diagonal each way and a full off so if we go back up we can see that that noise is generating this uh, randomness within this pattern and creating some cool, I think cool, uh, up art looking stuff. So that's awesome. Uh, let me see if I drag in some more uh, particle sources here. What else we have? Here's a, an animated uh, pre-comp. So there's just a uh, mosaic on a noise on each of these and they're just being controlled again almost like a timer map by that field so it's offsetting them and creating this uh, undulating waves uh, this is uh, same thing it's a, uh, a, a line animation so if we go inside here you can see there's just a, a gradient that is filling in from the outwards in and then it reverses basically based on that so you can see that this quickly can kind of just become something very uh, complicated and procedural to drive, you know, uh, displacements, or maybe you're generating other particles from this as an emission map or <laughs> a million things. Love to see what you come up with this. This is a great technique. Uh, let's just look at a few more. Uh, I think I just animated some more dots. These are, this is an interesting one. So I created some lines that, uh, again, basing everything off of this, you know, 100 by 100 grid by using, by knowing where the center is, you can kind of start creating these like interesting patterns of elbows and kind of like, you know, create your own mazes and, and pipe, pipes, connecting pipes. So that's cool. Again, all being controlled by that same uh, fractal noise. This is one with uh, different states of circles. So yeah, so again, just lots of different animations that quickly become something totally different by swapping out the particle source. Um, I think this is a, a great way of creating something simple that has a, a lot of flexibility 
but uh, isn't getting too complicated so you can go in there and dial it in and play with it what's also cool is again you're based on a, a on whole numbers so you can easily just kind of like adjust the sizing of it. say you liked this but you wanted it smaller you can easily go into your emitter change your grid properties to okay well I want this you know 20 by 20 you're gonna get something dense and then you can lower your uh, particle size down by half so now you have the same effect at a much you know finer detail level just by adjusting the numbers same thing uh, you could go higher again 40 40 25 25 and you start to get really intricate animations based on that so if you keep things whole numbers it makes for this kind of overall easy way to make these global adjustments uh, while keeping everything um, at easy to adjust and you can see that it's quick to render this out as well and the last thing is that this is great is that it is in 3d space so if you just added in a camera to this uh, you can rotate and be dimensional with it as well so and that means that you have depth of field um, if I don't freak it out uh, you have depth of field you have all that cool stuff I'm gonna drop this back down to 10 by 10 because I made it angry Oh well, sorry I made it angry. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, so yeah, so that's that's the um, that's it. That's all I've got. I hope that was helpful. Um, there, I brought it back. Uh, there it is with depth of field. Uh, hopefully that's helpful, and uh, hopefully you can use that in some of your projects. If that's helpful to you, let me know in the comments. If you create something cool, please share it with me. I'd love to see what you're making. Thanks again for watching. Sorry it's a bit random. Just tried to freestyle a little bit, and I knew there was a lot of like cool things to do with this, and I hope this is like enough to kind of grab on and run with and create your own uh, cool animations. Thanks again for watching. I appreciate it. Um, the Stardust community is really cool to see what everyone is doing, and I'm glad just to put tutorials out there and share my knowledge and hopefully help some of you make some cool stuff. Uh, always reach out to the Superluminal team if you run into any issues. They're great uh, support, and um, thank you for watching.